we're back in the Talarook Ranges for the third annual four-wheel drive TV challenge. We've got three special stages. Go! The points are in. We're out here today at Tullarook to do the four wheel drive TV challenge. So this car here, even though it's got two inch lift, it's looking kind of small compared to some of the other ones that are running around at the moment. We've got some pretty big cars in this event and I think that lift kit's definitely going to be needed. Last year we attended the four wheel drive TV challenge and weren't very competitive. Evan and I participated, but we did finish last. So this year to turn things up a little bit, we've brought along a Land Rover Discovery with an LS3 in it. The Land Rover might give us a bit of a, a run, but I, I hope not. <laughs> it ain't much of a disco, from what I understand. It's an LS in it, and a few other toys under the bonnet. And also, our secret weapon, the Narva Stig. G'day guys, and welcome to the third annual Four Drive TV Challenge. Great to have you here. I have got an awesome day planned for you. Three special stages with a few twists thrown in to keep you all honest. Now to help you all out, I've brought a mate along in a pace car to set the scene and show you how all the tracks run. Simon's asked me to come around and be the pace car today, so I might have to smash around some tracks as fast as I can, set some good times so no one can catch me. You'll see him take on the course to give you an idea of where to go, what to do, except for the little handicaps I'm gonna throw in for you guys. As always, the Four Drive TV Challenge trophy is up for grabs. Now, last year's winner, Tim from Lanatech, can't be here. Grant from Piranha, who won it the year before, can't be here. So today, the trophy could be anybody's. So to hold the trophy for today, to see which one of you is going to win it, we've got last year's loser, who's too scared to race this year. Ryan, come on over. You can hold the Four Drive TV Challenge trophy, and you'll be able to pass it on to one of the fortunate winners at the end of the day. Guys, let's get the vehicles on the rocks, let's get some points on the board, and have some fun. To work out race order, we have a selection of BRS gloves in here. There are four right-handers and one left-hander. We're gonna start with the wooden spooners from last year to see who goes first on stage one. Oh, straight out of the box, it's the left-hander. Nava is the first car racing on stage one, right after the pace car. Let's get onto the tracks, guys. Stage one was a rocky affair, kicking off with a granite step up, plateauing into a tight gate between two trees. A large loop around a central tree completed the rear end of the track, bringing teams back to the two tree gate and the final drop off into the finish box. The first car that had to go up obviously was the pace car. This is Rosie, it's a 1989 Ford Maverick. I've got a pretty capable vehicle behind me, but nothing compared to what the pace car was. I'm running 37 inch sticky traps on beadlock rims. The vehicle set up to go quick. It had a nice body roll to be able to cope with the tighter corners. It's a TB42 turbo. Makes a fair bit of noise and it goes not too bad. We'd launch through the rocks pretty quick. Made it look pretty damn easy, but then Simon threw a little curveball at us. Right guys, the time to beat is 43.98 seconds. The course is exactly as you saw it, except for here. Two of your tyres must go through this gate, and two must go through that gate over there. Other than that, drive the course as you've just seen it. The car that stood out for me on that first one was the Disco. Three, two, one, go! Stage one was very rocky. We had a, a fairly big incline. Being a shorter wheelbase, it made the turns a little bit easier than everyone else. 
When we walked the track, it sort of gave us some ideas. We sort of worked out what our best way to navigate through the course was. You didn't try and go too hard like everyone was trying to do it. Quite a couple of tight turns, back into the bunting, go around the tree, back down the decline. I think a little bit slower is actually faster at the end of the day. But yeah, you did a good job of that one. Trees missed the trees too. You didn't want to take them out. It was quite tight. Matt did an amazing job. 46 seconds, not bad. Our nervous dig and no damage to the vehicle too, which was even better. Three, two, one, go! At the start of this stage, there's a nice steep rock step. I decided to go round it, not really knowing the capability of the vehicle. The piranha car got stuck around the corner due to lack of height. Simon yep. so helped me get go, through that go. one. Go, 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 go. We ended up doing a nose gate and then rear gate and then a nice big steep drop off for the exit gate. Three minutes 31. <laughs> Start of the stage, piranha car, you got stuck all around the shaley area, around the side. I'm a little bit taller, so I believe I could take the same route and try it. Managed to get through. Doing our little U-turn that you wanted us to put two wheels out of the bunting area. Made us have to change our plan of attack for trying to get around the tree. Put us in a worse position, but made it more playful. 133.08, slow but respectable. Hopefully the old man's not too mad at me. He actually did a really good job. That's his first ever event. It's actually really exciting sitting back watching your son have a crack at something that I love passionately they're doing. I'm not sure how the LDV is going to go. Go! Into it! Come on! Get up there! My strategy was quite simple, just to get through the stage without any damage. I didn't want to push too hard and fast and have it all go wrong straight away. It was more of a drive with a bit of sensibility. I did get hung up on a rock bypass. Yeah, the tow bar had a bit of a scrape, a bit of a bottom out along there. It actually rolled through pretty well. 145.32. Right. I think you're some bigger by seven seconds. Ah! Three, two, one, go! But the forward drive session guys, they were hilarious to watch. I was just kicking back, enjoying the ride, really. They had a fair bit of red mist going out the box. And they actually ended up missing part of the track. Brett and James missed going around the main tree, which Simon didn't seem to pick up on. I think he missed that one, so we brought it to his attention. We had a pretty good run that run, and we wanted to make sure that you know it stayed that way. Well, let that score settle, and I'll work out how many points are being deducted for excessive engine revving, selecting the wrong gate, and not going around the course correctly. All right, stage two, let's go. Stage two was a sprint, looping clockwise between tight trees before picking a gap to a straight gentle climb through undergrowth and into the finish box. Lefty! Yeah. First up on the course, bring your car around, get lined up, right behind the pace car. Go! Pace car went through again. No gates, no nothing. No real tight turns or big rocks or anything to negotiate around. Very, very easy. I mean, he got around in like 20 seconds or just under. So we're thinking there has to be a catch. Yeah, he had some up his sleeve. 19.47 is the time to beat. Guys, you've seen how easy it is. Now come and have a look at this. Bit of a twist for you all. Starting with this stump right here, guys, we're going to have our first gate. Get out of your car, drive your car through the gate, stop your car, jump out, close the gate, and then head off. Gate number two opens from that end only. And here we have gate number three. How you do these gates is up to you, but you must race the course clockwise. Let's get into it. We were trying to strategize the best way to go about it. We were also listening in to everyone else's ideas as well. Three, two, one, go. Matt, he's a fit little greyhound. So he hopped out of the car, unlocked the first gate, and then drove the vehicle through, and then pulled up, continued to unlock the rest of them. And then 
went back, locked all the gates. Unfortunately, he didn't pull the chain across the track far enough and broke the chain, so we lost some points. Two zero six. That's a penalty. I could run around and open the gates and shut them behind you if you drove, because I'm the driver. Three, two, one, go! Brett being the driver, he had to do all the running, which was good. I get to stay in the car. He started at the very top and ran back down, opened the ball up. So when it was Brett's turn to take the track, get things nice and gun ho real quick time ahead of him. A little bit of the old speed lapse the judgment a little bit. I think we did pretty well with that one. I reckon hopefully we should be on top of the leaderboard. Didn't come out here to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Run! Run! Come on! It's not fair, he's got longer legs. He does, doesn't he? I decided to take the bet on, open all three gates, drive up to just after the third one, shut it and drive to the finish line. Don't know if it's the best decision, but the one I took and it's one off standby. If you could do this, you wouldn't have to run far at all. Three, two, one, go! So we had a couple of different strategies. A few guys would get told to start, jump out of the car, run around, open all the gates, come back, jump in the car, drive it all the way to the end, go back through, close the gates, and jump back in the car. In saying that, Narva did that and ran over the second gate and broke it in two places. So it may have worked for them, but they caught penalties for it. As we got through to the second gate, I have a feeling I broke one of the tags as it had been repaired. So I may have caught a penalty for that and not 100% sure. Three, two, one, go. That's his idea of a nice little stroll, oh, which I'm never going with him. No. <laughs> Hard work. This body ain't built for running. It's more of a driver's body than a running body, so it was good fun to get out of the car and have a run and a bit of a laugh with all the guys. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I watched my son do it. And I looked at that line and thought, that worked well, so I got some inspiration from my son. And I didn't run it like him, I ran it like an old fart, but I had a crack. All I can say is that the wild card are doing what they're supposed to be doing. There's a tie for second place. Third place isn't far behind, and the points stretch out down to the tail. Well, stage three, I have to be honest. I arrived then, I saw the rocks and went, wow, this is a tough LDV track. Stage three was tough and rocky, starting between two large trees with a straight run to a boulder strewn turnaround point. The return journey led back through a couple of gates to a sharp left at the start gate for a granite step up and an easy drop off to exit the course. So stage three was a more rockier terrain, very treacherous to say the least. A right. A right. Ooh. A right. Matt, we're good. And a left. We have a left. Piranha will be first after the pace car. Three, two, one, go! There's a good drive on his half. Good to watch. Nice rocks flying everywhere and a little bit of air lift. Ended up being quite sketchy too because it has some big boulders in there and you're trying to make sharp turns and it was sort of rolling you down the side of the cliff a little bit and trying to get the right line, which was pretty much impossible. He sent it, front wheels up in the air. Pretty entertaining. There was wheels, there was monos, there was rocks going everywhere. Boulders rolling under fuel tanks, diffs dragging over rocks. You'll see in the video, mate, it's a wonderful watch and very entertaining, especially when it wasn't my car getting trashed. Except for the fact I knew I'd do the track after him, so it was a little bit daunting. Simon gave us a little bit of a hint for a slower vehicle. Three, two, one, go! Quite a lot of skill involved in reversing down an obstacle like that. It could prove very beneficial to both of them if they managed to pull it off. Yeah. As we coming up, our exit gate was on the other side of a large boulder. So we had to turn around, line up the point and send it. 
to the last stage. We both fight for Wooden Spoon, so neither is one to get it. So I was lucky enough to be able to go after the Piranha car, so I watched the Piranha car reverse down. And he cleared that course without a mark on that car, did a really good job. Stage three was the last stage for the day, and of course it was uh, probably the hardest one of, of the day. Three, two, one, go! A lot of rocks, a lot of loose rocks, and driving up and down rock faces. Second load fast. <laughs> Four by forward session guys, they launch very similar to the, the pace car, and they got a lot of air and a lot of wheel action. I had to use one left front, one left rear, and sort of drive around over it, but it was pretty loose off the edge there, so it took a couple of turns to get back up out of the top. Towards the end, the last climb was just a bit of a rock climb. Just get into it and make some noise, get up there and got it done. Not bad, James. 102, 22. Cool. Excellent. How many smash stiffs have we got? Still drives. <laughs> well, stage three, I have to be honest, but I arrived then, I saw the rocks and went, wow, this is a tough LDV track. But Simon grabbed us and pulled us aside and gave us a bit of heads up. But last year, a few of the guys actually fired reverse in the course. I walked it again, had a thought, look, I'll give it a crack. A couple of the vehicles, which was probably a smart idea for them, they actually started off in reverse down to the rock face where they had to put at least two wheels, which was quite smart. So I backed down, backed into the little special box he had. That meant I could just drive forward and bypass all the loose rocks. And I actually could pick a line, drive around, and got to the rock face. I lined it up, aimed where I thought I was going to go, and it didn't quite get the line I wanted. It actually bellied out and stopped, so backed up a foot talked it up on the auto and launched it and off we went and just climbed up over and I reckon it did the car really proud. No dinks, no scratches and what a good time that was. Oh, you Stage three was a more rockier terrain. Matt opted to drive down because it was going to be faster than reversing so he drove down and then absolutely sent it through and around the tree. Very treacherous to say the least. Uh, the disco, uh, he drove a pretty bit of anger, but very controlled anger. He, he sort of knew when you use that anger to give traction and speed rather than just launch him. The Nava Land Rover just had sway bar disconnects on it, so it could go to whatever angle it wanted to. Well, well, well. How did we go? That's a point saving race. 53 seconds. Oh, we, don't, we don't use that language on TV. Sorry. Can't blow that it in neutral, just take off. But hey, uh, off to a slow start, but he recovered. Hi, dear Mum. Hi, Mum. If I break it, I'm sorry. After seeing Pace Car and a few other cars, decided to drive all the way down to the end, touch the mark, reverse back up the track to reach a good point to turn around thought I was in a different position where I was, so it took me a couple of shunts, whereas in hindsight, being a wonderful thing, probably could have done it in one, maybe two drives. But then, buttons in, it was full power up the hill. A little bit of mojo, got it up there, set a bit of a show for everyone. It's nice for everyone to see, have some fun. One twenty-six fifty-six. Very nice. Well done. Thank you. Top effort. Points are in the 2022 Four Drive TV Challenge Sponsor Edition. We'll start with bottom, last, the wooden spoon. With 30 points in fifth place, Piranha. Whoa, whoa, quieten down everybody. <laughs> There's more to read out. Fourth place, Team VRS. Third place, Ride Pro. In second place, we've got Nava. Whoa, no clapping there. And first place goes to our wildcard entry, 4x4 Obsession with 130 points. Great job, everybody. Simon gave us the results and it turns out that we actually won. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. It's been a good day out. It is a competition, but it's also more about the fun. Great day, well done. Thank you. Overall, we finished second, so second position is a lot better than finishing last, which is what we did last year, so massive improvement. I may have kissed a few rocks with sidesteps and bash plates, but it's still in one piece. I cannot believe how much enjoyment I had watching my son pedal the track, a bit like his old man did years and years ago. 
I look forward to the day my grandson can come out here and have a go and he can pedal my car too.